Thanks, like, and subscribe. I first bought it at Fortune. The whole thing was a bit of an experiment. Now I am positive this is implementation. And what I mean by that is, in 1997, 98, when we were talking about the internet, we dreamed what the internet could be. The internet is so much more ubiquitous today than anything we ever dreamed about, right? The same is gonna be with blockchain. You're gonna see blockchain technology everywhere in 10, 15 years. It, it, it's gonna be a different world in lots of ways. There's some pretty credible naysayers out there. Jamie Dimon, for example, CEO of JP Morgan. He yeah, called it a What's interesting is the same day Jamie Dimon is, is making those comments, his San Francisco office is hosting a Bitcoin platform. It's true. Platform. And so, well, it's not just him, right? So he calls it a fraud. Ray Dalio calls it a bubble. Howard Marks well, says it's not real. He said it, he kind of took it back. Listen, it is a bubble. This is going to be the largest bubble of our lifetimes. And so, but remember, bubbles happen around things that fundamentally change the way we live. The railroad bubble, I think railroads really fundamentally changed the way we lived. The internet bubble changed the way we live. And so, prices are going to get way, above, uh, way ahead of where they should be. You can make a whole lot of money uh, on the way up, and we plan on it. Uh, at one point, you're going to have to sell. I, you know, I, I don't anticipate just sitting here and watching my money go up and down. And up and, like, we're going to be active and try to buy the right companies. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of ICOs that are going to go to zero. Um, and so uh, it's a dangerous space. I wouldn't tell someone to put 100% of your net worth in it. One of the reasons I've sold some is I got, had so much of my net worth in it. Uh, but should everybody have some? I think everybody should have some. Tell me something. How does someone who immersed himself in macroeconomics for 30 years, right, who poured over current account deficits, who placed bets on interest rate differentials, get comfortable conceptually, intellectually, physically even, with something as abstract as cryptocurrencies? You know, in a lot of ways, this is a market like any other market. And you can you see the psychology of fear and greed and 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 and, and uh, in the charts the same way you'd see them in the charts of the Indonesian rupiah or dollar yen or, or or treasuries. They're exaggerated because of less liquidity and because you can't get short. There's not a real good way to short. And so when they fall, Jamie Dimon makes a comment. China. Uh, bans, bans the exchanges, the trend line breaks, they fall a lot farther than they would have in, in other markets because there's just not a short base to cover. And so you go into, you know, reach a new level of, uh, of support and kind of rebuild your, your, your base. How do you know when to buy and sell? How do you trade this thing? You know, there are multiple ways to trade. One is, it's just macro. And so I trade the, the ballet of the charts, the ballet of the prices. I always tell people I need a story and a chart. And there's a lot of information, and so part of it is event-driven and access to information. So one of the things we keep trying to, I keep trying to do is put myself in the center of the ecosystem. It's so when you're center of the ecosystem and it's a, still a relatively small world, you know what's happening. And so when the Ethereum Alliance got announced, it was well telegraphed that it was going to get announced. You talk to people, you knew it was going to get announced. And then it gets announced and the price goes way, way up. And so I would call that an event-driven trade. Um, the broad trading of it is macro, though. You'll see mini zeniths and euphorias. And so I sold at 5,000 or 4980. I actually sold some Bitcoin. And then, you know, three weeks later, you're trying to buy it in the low 3,000s. And, uh, you know, listen, if you're good at that and you're a trading junkie, it's a lot of fun. It does increase your tax bill. And so for some people to just sit, sit and sit, that's a different strategy. You're trading what, Bitcoin? We trade. Ether? We, I've, Jesus I've, coin? I've, not in Jesus coin. I've taken the approach to participate in all sides of the ecosystem. So I have mines, investments in mining. Uh, to create new coins. To create new coins. You know, that's been an interesting business. It's been a money loser for us in local currency terms. Right? I spent bitcoins to buy a bitcoin mine. If I had spent dollars to buy a bitcoin mine, I would have made a lot of money. But you were better off just owning the bitcoins. And in Ether, you were far better off just owning the Ether than building Ether mine. Where, where are you trading? What platforms? So, you know, we're fairly large, and so we trade at lots of different exchanges. And 
One of the tricks, or the, the risks in this business right now is, the riskiest money you have in the system is being left on the exchanges, because... There's no central clearing there. And there's, they, you know, they don't, they're not that well capitalized, and, and so you don't leave that much money on the exchanges, and so we, we trade in lots of them. Um, you know, Gemini here in New York, the, the, the Cameron and Tyler's exchange is, is, is one of our go-to places. Because that got regulated, you feel a little bit better about it. And, you know, I know those guys, so, so if something really bad happened, I go down and, and give them a shot. <laughs> <laughs>